Thank you. Nine seven. That was a great day. Nine seven, one of the best days of my life. September seventh, two thousand and one. Good day. I just gotten laid off from my IT consulting job in Chicago, Illinois. A lot of people wouldn't be excited about getting laid off from a high-paying consulting job, but uh, then again, a lot of people didn't suck quite the way that I did at my job. I, and this is true, I, I was so bad at what I did that other South Asian men would tell me, buddy, maybe you should be looking for something else. I'd be like, man, we, we come from the same place. We don't have a kinship, some sort of camaraderie. We do, but you're really, really bad at this. It's like a message that I shouldn't have been there. But I had had a big idea. A year prior, I was, uh, I was living at my parents' house. I had a, a poli-sci degree that was collecting a lot of dust. I had left an MBA program halfway through, unemployed, doing nothing, trying to figure out where my life could go professionally. And I had nothing. Just a, a, a quickly, quickly coming uh, depression that was, that was coming over me. That's pr pretty much what I had. Uh, I was being enveloped by sadness. And every day I would be like, what do I do? What do I do? And then it hit me a big, brilliant idea. And I couldn't believe I hadn't thought of it before. It was absolutely foolproof. Here's how it worked. All right? Number one, you scan your group of friends. Right? Number two, of those friends, identify who the successful ones are. Number three, of those, find out which successful friends are dumber than you. That's important. And number four, find out what career paths they have taken in their lives. The dummies, you're focusing on the dummies. And then number five, embark on the same career path and just let the money and job satisfaction roll in. And so I looked at my at, my, at the dummies in my life, good buddies, not very bright, <coughs> even by their own admission, some of them, and I was like, man, all of these guys are in IT. Well, guess who else is gonna be in IT? This guy. I'm gonna kill it in IT, a field I know nothing about, doesn't matter. There is hope for me in information technology. And so I enrolled in ITI, uh, which is the in Institute of Technology and Information. Probably not. I should have paid more attention. That goes to show the, in the Information Technology Institute, I believe, in Toronto. Now bankrupt. Um, I don't know why. Uh, I, uh, I had to get my father to co-sign a loan for $22,000. It took me 11 years to pay back that loan. 9-7. 9-7 was a great day. It was really just the layoff that I already mentioned. We were partying. 9-8, 9-9 are a weekend. Having a good time. 9-10 is my birthday. So you can imagine the numerous things that are being celebrated and just the relief that I have. And then Tuesday, not a good day. 9-11, as some of you might refer to it as. Not a good day at all, the worst day that I probably ever experienced. I had decided over the weekend that I was going to make a little shift in this IT consulting work that I did. I didn't enjoy being at a computer on a project in Deerfield, Illinois when the client was in Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina. I didn't like any of that. I realized where my future lay, IT sales. That's what I was gonna do. I've got already some IT knowledge, a little bit, not much. But sales, I can talk to people, I can socialize, I can build rapport, that's what I'm gonna do. IT sales is where it's at. So I sat down Tuesday morning at my cousin's house. Even he was impressed, he's like, already? I'm like, already man, laid off on a Friday, looking for work, fighting a mild hangover on Tuesday morning. And he used to go to work at seven in the morning, he took off for work. My laptop had been repossessed, so I was at his house, and I was looking for jobs. I was in all the, uh, the, the trendy sites, du jour, workopolis, monster.com, and, uh, and I was just looking for work, IT sales. I had a, 
a, a new outlook. I had a, you know, a, a feeling of encouragement. I was going to do this work and I was going to enjoy my job finally. And in the corner on the television, there's some know, war documentary or something that was taking place and I saw these planes fly into a building and I was like, that's not what I want to watch. I don't need that here. Let me just change the channel. Change the channel, same thing going on. Change the channel a third time, the same thing was playing on a third channel. Then I turned up the volume and I realized what was happening. And many of you would have experienced 9-11. The only way I can explain really what I went through, at first anyway, complete paralysis. Where you wonder if you're dreaming, you must be dreaming because that's not actually possible that that's happening. And then anxiety and nausea. And I had a little bit more of a, a, an element of horror because there was a moment, if you remember 9-11, there was a moment where there was a plane that was, was missing. It was unaccounted for, but the flight path was headed towards Chicago. And I looked out my cousin's apartment and I said, am I about to watch a plane two kilometers south of me go into the Sears Tower? Is that what's gonna happen? And I was freaked out and in the end that, that plane did you know, land in, in the field in Pennsylvania, but obviously the damage was done. And, uh, and that was a wrap on the day of, uh, of job hunting. Uh, and in fact, that was a wrap on, uh, on a many, many weeks of job hunting. Uh, you know, we, uh, we just all tried to spend time together as friends and treasure our lives. You know, I, I noticed in the, in the week afterwards, as I'd walk around in the streets, I would get some looks. I tried to shake them off and not really pay too much attention to them. And then, you know, it was November. It's the start of November and I haven't applied anywhere because I don't want to be that guy. Who's, who wants to be that guy who sends an email to somebody that says, real bummer about the planes and all that. Hey, you guys hiring? No, that guy's not getting a job. That guy is not welcome in any company. So I didn't know how to begin hiring. I didn't know how to start again. And my friend Ange invites me to her apartment. It's, a, it's a, gonna be a little bit of a barbecue, gonna be in her, her, her games room, in her condo. Go to, the, go to the party, and uh, just kind of standing out there, shivering on the, on the patio, and Ange says to me, Ange, this is Anil. Anil, this is Ali. Anil actually owns an IT sales company. He owns an IT company, and he hires a sales force of how many people? He goes, yeah, 15, 18 people. And I was like, here it is. Here is my big break. Finally, this is unbelievable that I would meet this guy here on this day, so I tell him about my background, and I tell him about the change I want to make in my life in IT sales. And he says, what did you say your name was? And I said, well, it's Ali, Ali Hassan. And he said, uh, I wouldn't hire you. That American honesty is jarring sometimes, you know, when you're not ready for it. I remember just thinking, any second now he's going to go, ha ha, of course I would, what am I saying? That didn't happen. That, not only did that not happen, he added to that comment and he said, you know, I have customers in Ohio and Indiana and Nebraska, they don't want to see an Ali Hassan. And that was uh, an awakening, awakening for me, which is weird. I mean, that's weird that I have to have this guy tell me who I appear to be. That's how white I am in my mind, you know? That's like what a white guy I am. Like, I know I'm brown, obviously, but I don't, that's not a reality for me on a daily basis. I mean, I, I play hockey. I can sing 10 Blue Rodeo songs by heart right now if you need me to. I make ribs in a slow cooker. I'm a white guy, you know? I'm basically a white guy. I'm a chameleon. But that day, I was like, oh, I, shit. I guess I just learned that, no, dude, you're not Al. You're Ali. You're brown and you're Muslim. So... You know, in a, in a movie, there's a, a montage that takes place, typically, to show a bunch of things happening in a, in a short period of time. This is the montage part of this story. I had a conversation with this guy, Anil, but a month later, packed up everything, leaving Chicago to come back to Canada. Came back to Canada, I actually completed my MBA. Uh, in my MBA, people would tell me, hey man, you are obviously obsessed with food. You should be involved with, with food. After I completed my MBA, I started a catering company. In that catering company, I, I really I found a lot of satisfaction. And I was like, what else do I want to do with this? 
and I realized I want to have a food show. I want to have a show on television where I entertain people and teach them how to cook. How do I do that? And then I said, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll go uh, into uh, open mics, comedy open mics. That's what I'll do. That's where I'll gain my, my, my confidence and create a persona, and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll be ready for the camera when it happens. And, uh, and that's what I did. But I, I fell in love with stand-up comedy along the way. And then today, you know, in 2015, I have, uh, I have comedy, stand-up comedy credits, and I have film credits and television credits that were inconceivable to me in 2001. I am a stranger to the person I was in 2001. IT sales guy doesn't know this guy, but this guy is very, very happy. And so sometimes you think you have a big idea, but it's actually a, a brown guy who runs an IT firm who's standing on a cold balcony in Chicago that has a real big idea. Thank you. <laughs>